Yo, what it do, guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we're going to be covering a steel path build here for Wisp, but I do go ahead and disclose this as much as I can. This is going to be a support build. This is for you who's like, do you know what? I want to go ahead and let everyone else go ahead and do all the work. I'm just going to chill and give them the tools and utility to go and do so. So normally I would go for damage builds, but this one is highly effective as a support and you're going to help everybody and everything that you go ahead and meet as well. So it doesn't just work on allies. It will also work on companions and, and like a rescue objectives and so forth. So so a lot of good things here now this is gonna be in the warframe wisp and as we're going to see here i'm going to be using one her augments but we'll go and get to that just a little bit later but at first let's go and cover the rest of her kit and explain what's what and what's going on here so we'll start things off with her passive now her passive to put simply jump you're out of danger basically if any enemy is going to go ahead and look at you um if you want to go and go visible just jump it's, it's basically that now you can see i've got a bit of a cloak going on around me if i stop you see how she's not highlighted but if i jump she's highlighted so if you chain it just well enough like this you can uh, remain invisible now if you do go to melee you will also remain invisible but if you do go and shoot there we go if you do go and shoot you'll break your invisibility on shots so it's there to serve more of a purpose that you can't just go ahead and play passively have invisibility bunny hopping around and just shooting people okay but great passive, absolutely fantastic passive. Let's continue with the rest. So we got her first ability. This is Reservoirs. Now, this is going to be the core part of what you guys are doing, okay? This is where the support factor really comes in. So Reservoirs works on a few different things. So let's go ahead and have a little look. So if you go ahead and cycle down in the bottom right, you'll see there's a couple of Reservoirs down there. Now, the Augment will change this, but for now, we're just going to pay attention to those right there, okay? Um, so let's go and start with Vitality. What will happen is when you hold it down, you'll put down a moat. Now, there's three different modes, okay? So we got Vitality, we got a Haste, and we got shock to start off with vitality is basically going to increase your overall hp and it's also going to give you health regen per second which is phenomenal okay now when it comes towards haste they are also ever so slightly visually identifiable yeah it's got like a u there but then that one's got like a joint so you can you can kind of see the difference but i'm not gonna lie to you it's so like minimal don't worry about it but anyways we got haste haste is going to give you movement speed so i'm going to be able to move a lot quicker now i'm going to be able to shoot a lot quicker and i'm also going to be able to melee a lot quicker so this is just your, like good utility so vitality survival haste kind of self-explanatory movement fire rate move uh, attack speed all of that good stuff and we've got this last one called shock and shock as you can see is a little bit different at the top there see how that's got the u that's got that that's got that shock is basically going to go and give you a bit of like electricity pulsing around you so let's go ahead and show what that looks like. If I go and move up towards some enemies over here, see how I do like this electric proc over towards them every so often, which is really good because it gives you minor crowd control as you're moving and conversing through different uh, packs of enemies. So it's just a very good minor utility um, for crowd control. So really, really nice here. Now, another thing's going to say with the reservoirs as well is that when you're inside, you see the areas where they are. When you're inside the zone, you will see in the top right, I have an infinite time. So long as I'm in the area, they remain there infinitely. And whenever you put them down, they also remain there infinitely, which is really good. Um, so if I go and put this one down here, a vitality, you see I've got four of them down. If I go and put this one down here, another vitality, we got uh, five of them down. Another vitality, we've got six of them down. And then if I do this, you'll see it replaces the first one, okay? So you can have a maximum of six of them placed down in different areas. So you can select and choose which ones you want. Um, it's really good for like survival missions or missions where people are running back and forth, maybe like mirror defense or defense missions and so forth. So um, yeah, just, just really good for that. But as I was saying about the infinite uh, time up there, if you move out of the zone, they will slowly start ticking down based on duration as well, okay? So, um, it, it's, it, honestly, it's really, really nice, though. You don't need to ramp your duration super, super high, but just quickly refreshing and then moving through them. You see how it resets it. So, it's really, really good. Now, your first does go ahead and synergize a little bit with your second here, but it does go and synergize with your third, and your first also synergizes with your fourth. Um, so, you will go and see this thing here. This is to do with the third. I will come back to that in a moment. And it also does synergize with her fourth, but for our builds, we're not actually running her fourth, but we'll go and get to that a little bit later layer as well so reservoirs are your absolute bread and butter okay this is what we're going to be using as a supportive tool and the augment's going to make this even better so we'll get to that in a moment so up next we got willow wisp and willow wisp going to put briefly uh, th this one's so easy to go ahead and explain is um it's going to come out in two different ways right um 
I'm just gonna, sorry, I'm just gonna move these over here so they're not in the way. <laughs> there you go. All right, all of those out of the way. So the will o wisp is basically going to work in two different ways. If I press two, you'll see I've got that cloak around me again. So if I was to jump, you see it, it looks like that. What actually happened is I sent a clone version of Wisp out, and as long as that clone version has been sent out and active, I'm invisible. Now I can shoot during this. Okay, so the passive will break if I jump and shoot, but if I've got this active, I can shoot and remain invisible. So if you tap it and then tap again, you will then teleport to where it is. So if I go and look up there and I throw it that way, and then I re-tap, that's me over there. So that's what happens when you tap it, tap into it. Now, if you hold it down, it will go way quicker. And if you let go, you'll also go ahead and end up where it is. So you can travel really quickly. So I could be like, do you know what? I need to go that way. Uh, let me go and quickly grab this, collect this. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's teleport. There we go. Get the idea? So you can use it as a way to go ahead and maneuver around. It's very, very nice. I'm not going to lie to you. Very, very nice. Plus, like I said, it's more survival towards her. So if you're ever in danger, it doesn't matter where you send it. Just send it off. Enemies are going to be like trying to be drawn towards this and whatnot. You're just going to be chilling. Okay, so you'll get, you can go ahead and hang out. It's all good. Now, her second also synergizes with her third, which we're going to go and get into, a, in, into as well in a second. Um, but basically, her second is, um, again, more survival for you and a parkour utility tool. All right, just basically briefly explain how that works. Uh, okay, and then we got Breach Surge. Now, Breach Surge, um, I'll try and show you what it looks like here. When pressed... I knew this was going to bug. I've been having a bit of a bug at the moment, so this is going to be a little bit annoying. Let me go get the visual uh, thing, and I'll go and zoom into this for you guys so you can go and see what it actually looks like. So right there. So what will happen is she goes, she pulses off these like sparks uh, that go ahead and spiral around her. Um, as of right now, I don't know why, but it keeps breaking inside my Simulacrum. Uh, and again, it would be on your energy color. So I've got two whites here. You would definitely be able to see it. For some unknown reason, it just keeps breaking. I'm sorry that it's broken on video. I made sure that it worked just before I started recording. And as soon as I go into the arsenal, it seems to break it. I've got no idea why. Yeah, you can't see it, which is really frustrating. Anyways, you'll send these sparks out and these sparks will basically go ahead and blind enemies. So if I go and do it here, you can see how it blinds them, right? So you can see who is affected and who isn't. Very obvious, go and see who is affected. As you can see, all of them are affected right now. So it will blind enemies. Now, if they do have overguards, in the past, it used to be able to blind them. Uh, it doesn't do that anymore. Okay, so um, if they do have overguard on them, you're not going to be blinded them. You're not really going to be... It, the effect will be applied onto them, but nothing will actually be happening, if that makes sense. Um, if you do go and remove their overguards, then the moment their overguard drops, the effect then starts taking place. They'll instantly be blinded and so forth. It's almost like a delayed reaction, if you will. So now what happens here is that there is a 10% chance, if I go and do this again, there is a 10% chance that if I hit this enemy, there we go, a little spark will come out. You going to see that? I'm going to hit again. There we go. See these sparks coming out there as well? Didn't get one on that one. Didn't get one on that one. Wait, oh, I did get one on that one, but it was over there. So there's a 10% chance that when you go ahead and hit them, when they're affected by Breach Surge, there you go, there's a perfect example, it will basically go ahead and uh, go out there. Now, this is really, really good on dots. So if, you're, if you've got a Warframe, so the good thing about this ability is that it's subs when you subsume Wisp to the Helminth, you can give this ability to other Warframes. So other Warframes that have got like dots, imagine someone like Garuda or someone else like that, um, who's got like a lot of slash and so forth. Um, Putting this ability onto other Warframes is way better than bringing other Warframes towards Wisp. Okay, so um, fantastic abilities going put like on other uh, other frames. All right, so dot builds are going to be proccing that ten percent way more often and way more frequently. Okay, so the chain reaction is going to be amazing. Now, if you do kill the enemy, there is a one hundred percent chance that that spark will go ahead and go straight out. So if the enemy's dead, you're guaranteed a spark. If the enemy's not dead and you're just hitting the enemy, there's a 10% chance. Just remember that, okay? Now, there's also a 100% chance of use her fourth ability, but we don't have a fourth ability because there's just no point for it. Anyways, so now the way that the sparks basically work is when the spark is active and I activate one, so if I can get one out. There we, oh, there we go. There's some sparks coming out there. See if there's heat on it right now. 
See, so with dots, it's actually good because it will continuously proc. So he is a great example of that. Sparks will go. Uh, Sparks will go ahead and home in and seek onto other enemies, dealing headshot damage and damage equal to whatever was dealt to the blinded enemy. So if you hit them really hard under this effect then that's that breach that that spark that comes out will be even harder than like little dots and so forth dots are cool but if you can nuke with breach dodge as well then it will just ramp and, and add more uh, outgoing source damage for you which is just fantastic what then happens is that it then multiplies its damage by two okay so when you ever go and read the ability you'll see that it was that has a, an innate damage multiplier well that damage multiplier can also be scaled off of strength so you can get some really really nice utility rotations by using this to blind the enemies then whenever you're ready to either dot them or hit them really hard and then spread this extra burst going out there so that's basically how that's working all right now for those who are wondering because this was like the first thing that came to my head as well was if i was to go ahead and kill this enemy who's affected by the ability um when this enemy dies does it release a spark onto another enemy that then blinds that enemy that then starts a chain reaction no okay so <laughs> no but that's the first thing that came to my head as well so don't worry that's not how it works it's only to those who are affected by what you are doing at the time that you cast breach surge now the good thing is you can cast it and recast it again whenever you need to okay it'll basically just refresh the duration of what's going on here and any new enemies that enter your vicinity and your area will also then just be blinded and then you can go ahead and just keep a good lockdown now talking about the um third ability i did say i'm going to come back to it was what was this so so long as i've got line of sight on this right now i can basically go ahead and teleport to it when i do to, you see how i'm blinding those guys over there so when i teleport to this it doubles the range of breach okay so if i go and do this like here i don't think i've reached them from here i've reached one person you see how only one person's been moved on that sorry that i know i know it's visually hard to go and see there but this person was marked whereas if i go and teleport towards this see how many of them but so it doubles the range of what your normal range per cast of breach is Anyways, um, this is incredible. Use this in open worlds like Planes of Eidolon or something else like that. Get yourself into um, like a uh, Arcwing or so forth. I'm just going to give you guys a little tip right now. So imagine that we were... Is there a place where I can put this? Let's say I put it right here, yeah? Cool. So, so long as you can see it, you can teleport to it. Does that make sense? There you go. Like that you can do this in like open world so long as you can see it and so long as you get that little ring going there you can teleport to it go have fun <laughs> go have some fun it's it's really really cool the setups that you can do especially in like planes of eidolon you get in an arc wing you go all the way above the door in planes of eidolon you put one down up in the air just above planes of eidolon then you go off and do your bounties and whatnot and the moment you want to go ahead and extract turn around look up and then just teleport straight to it and you'll just skip across the entire map so we're talking like thousands of meters it's, it's really fun to go ahead and do it but have a little mess around anyways so last ability over here we've got we've got nourish and the reason why i'm using nourish inside this build is because this is my support build okay it's not because i think nourish is best in slot here it's because you can actually use anything here okay this option is your subsumable option take whatever you want to that can be speed movement speed towards allies it could be fire rate increases it could be attack speed it could be war cry it could be rhino's roar if you want to go and give your allies more damage it could be nourish where you're going to get energy so the energy multiplier to help them um, whenever your allies are getting energy uh, back um, you're going you increase the amount of energy that they get per energy source and also i also go and add viral towards them as well so they get viral damage on towards their weapons that scale off the status chance on their weapons so you see how like i'm very very supportive right now and that's my entire point i'm going to be blinding enemies i'm going to be um buffing allies with uh, extra Extra health and health regen movement speed attack speed all of that good stuff are going to be giving them extra damage um, and status chance of viral one of the best uh, debuffing elements in the game uh, whilst also helping their energy multiplier and if i'm in trouble and i need to go and survive boom and boom all right and then i'm all good as well so anyways that's a rundown of a kit on a fourth run whatever you want to there's lots of different options but remember you are supporting that's the entire goal of it so let's go ahead and without further ado let's go ahead and get into a build um so 
First thing that the build is currently missing, if you just give me two seconds, is her augments. Let's go and put that in straight away. There we go. Okay, so there we go. There's the build right there. So let's go and talk about a few things in this build. I'll talk about what you can go ahead and change and what you want to go and take and yada, yada, yada. So fuse reservoir. The way that this now works is, is that it adds a fourth reservoir that gives the effects of all three. Yeah. So let me go and show you what this looks like now. Oh God, I'm actually so bugged in the similar crime. I think I've cycled to it. So if you look at the cycle at the bottom, it says vitality, haste, shock. I'm going to rotate, but watch it bug. Okay, so my similar crime's bugged right now, okay? Anyways, you get to the fourth one, so there'll be four in there. Now when I hold this down, I get all three motes on one, which is so good. I don't have to put them down one by one by one. Instead, I now cycle to the fourth one. I place it down and I can get that. Now, I believe you can put down, I think it's a maximum of two of these. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's in increments of three. So there's three there and there's three there. So I can put down two of them. All right. So that's what that is now going to do, which makes this way easier for me to go and buff my allies nice and quick. Okay. So that's the augment. That's what it's doing. Fantastic. Don't, as you can see, you don't have to run it, but damn, that's a good quality of life. So start off with this. This is what I would recommend by all means. Then from there onwards, you're going to focus on two different things. Number one, do you want to buff allies and or do you want to buff allies with their health, their survival, movement speed, attack speed, so forth? If the answer is yes, and you just want to give them everything, go strength. More strength, the bigger return values that you get all across here. Okay, now if you don't want to do that, the second value to go for is then duration. Because once they then leave these moats and they leave the moat area, remember it's got like a little radial area. Once they leave that, they then have to rely on the duration of the ability length, if that makes sense. Which is why I bump up my duration as well. I think strength or duration, it doesn't matter which one you want to take, strength or duration, okay? So any strength mods you've got on, put them in. Any duration mods you've got on, put them in. You can't go wrong. Now here's the next kicker. The next one is range. And range, I feel like when I've talked to some people, is gonna be subjective to each user. It's entirely up to you. For me, I think 145% range is fantastic. That's probably what I'm gonna be leaning towards anyways. This allows things like the um, shock mode as well. Uh, the range of the shock mode, as you can see, is now 21 meters away, which just allows you to go and activate it from a little bit further, all right? So range is still gonna be, it's gonna be nice and breach surge as well for the teleportation. It's gonna help my nourish, my buffing ability towards my allies. It's also gonna help that range. So I wouldn't say that you need a tremendous amount of range, but some people like to have way more range than what I do, even though you are a support. So normally supports go for lots of range. I feel like this build doesn't need a tremendous amount, all right? Regardless, once you put a moat down, the moat can't scale um, in range once the moat is down when it is down, all right? You can scale the actual radius of the emote mo up there. You see where it says radius five, seven point, but the radius is so small that it's like, there's no point really trying to give that much more. Just find an area, lock down that area, leave it there, or put it in between like corridors, you know, where people like going from one area to another, put it in between it, and then as they go through it, they automatically get the buffs, okay? Do keep in mind though, nullifier bubbles will go ahead and break this. So if you are clever, try and put these in elevated areas where enemies can't get to them. And if you play with more seasoned players, they will notice that like, oh, why is the why is the wisp moats right up here on top of this statue? It's because enemies can't get there, but we can. So we jump up, grab it, and then jump back down and carry on doing what we're doing. So I'm saying, so it's a little tip for you. Now, as for the rest of the build, it's entirely up to you how you wanna go and do this. So I'm gonna go and throw it out there. There's two options in here. You do not need them by all means because you are technically a support, but the quality of life that they offer is fantastic. Number one, prime sure for it's Okay, yeah, the idea is that this resists knockdown. No one wants to be knocked down. It's disruptive to gameplay. It doesn't feel great. And it can also leave you vulnerable and susceptible to incoming damage. So that is nice. If you do not have this, you do not need to go ahead and run it by all means. It's not a necessity to the builds. So if you wanna go and put in things like power drifts, Power Drift will go ahead, a lot of the Drift mods are going to work out here. Power Drift gives you more strength and a 30% chance going to resist knockdown, whereas that is a 100%. So that's not too bad. You know, it acts, acts as a smaller version of Prime Shore Footed. Uh, there is a Shore Footed mod rather than Prime Shore Footed, but rather just take the ability strength from this at that point. <laughs> 
So you can put more ability strength in there. That's fine. You could do cutting drift where you can also go and get ability range. That's also fine as well. Or you could even do something like preparation, which is also good. 100% maximum energy field on spawn. Now, whenever, whenever you go and do your builds, do go and keep in mind that when it comes towards energy, hover over the energy stat, start missions, oh, sorry, start missions with 200 energy. That is really important. I need to make sure that as soon as I get into the mission, I can cast this which it says 38 round up. Let's say it's, it costs 40 and I need to be able to cast this. So let's just say it's 77. Let's say it's 80. 40 plus 80 is 120. Do I have 120 here? I do. Okay, so that's good. That basically means as soon as I start the mission, I can put this down and I can put that down and I've already buffed my allies. So this, the rest of the mission is going to flow completely fine. And even if I didn't, as so long as you've got enough to cast this and then get a couple of kills and a couple of energy coming back, that will help you okay just make sure that you do have at least enough to put go ahead and do that if you do take this option it's up to you what you want to go and take for your fourth now as for the rest of the build we've got a few other things we're going to talk about um so we've got arc on stretch sorry I, we'll get to what i got in a second but we've got arc on stretch as well um this synergizes abilities that deal electric damage restore two energy uh, per second over five seconds well the shock moat literally does electric procs so it's free energy <laughs> just move around sap an, sap an enemy and you go ahead and get some energy back so it's a really good return and do keep in mind any energy that is coming in is being amplified by essentially nourishing this point you will have so much like 855 you will have so much stored energy you've got no excuse not to be spamming this for your teammates spam spam away have fun with it, all right? Keep casting it. It doesn't matter if it costs 77. You will have so much energy coming back through energy orbs, through stretch uh, increases, all of that good stuff. You're going to be fine, all right? So this allows you to really be super, super supportive. Um, so yeah, then there is rolling guards. This just basically, you become invulnerable for three seconds and remove all status effects. This is kind of like my invisibility is cool and all but if you're in groups sometimes some enemies like an arson eximus will go ahead and slam into the ground and send a uh, wave of um heat uh, kind of going out and if you do get caught by it um at a certain threshold not only will it one shot your shields uh, then it will still continue ticking whilst your um damage of vulnerability your shield getting is kicked in and then when your shield getting is finished you've still got those heat procs on you um, it will one shot you so that's where that can come in this allows you to scale and just have a safety net this is all about safety when you're playing around your invisibility all right this goes for any frame that's got um invisibility so this is an optional this is actually really nice if you can go and get it all right if you don't have this honestly just go ahead and don't be afraid go and pop in uh, some other survival things like vitality is fine because keep in mind you'll get increased returns of reservoirs you can get a lot of health on her if you do vitality and you also go and run arcane blessing as well and you run her moat you're getting a tremendous amount of health return so you can go and do that but just have some health have some shields it's fine all right don't overthink it um, other things that we do have in here is again strength this is fine if you don't have this it's not the end of the world um just go ahead and run intensify uh blind rage um if you're a newer player and you don't have the way to sustain your energy output don't run blind rage just run transient fortitudes um at that point um yes it does go ahead and hurt your duration but at least you don't have to worry about your efficiency you should be okay though once you've got if you if you go for the nourish route with the the stretch and all of the kills and stuff that people are doing then you should just be all right to go ahead and run blind rage you just don't have to be super spammy with this just make sure your reservoirs are set up in a good spot and make sure you cast nourish every so often get a couple of kills get a couple of assists kick back and then uh, it, you will slowly fill up energy over time right um, but if you do find yourself lacking in energy put in transient fortitude over blind rage and keep your efficiency at 100 percent until you can fix it later or if you don't have grendel's nourish like i said then maybe that might be a little bit overwhelming also depends on what companion you're running if you're running a companion with uh simp or something else like that um actually or duplex sorry running the companion with duplex they can also go and drop energy orbs um, so yeah, Prime Flow, not a necessity. Good thing is she already has a good amount of base. 300 is fantastic. So if you want to, you can put more um, strength or something else like that there if you want to. Augur Secrets. Oh, sorry, I already got Augur Secrets. Augur Message could go in there, you know, if you want to and go get some more duration. It's entirely up to you, but I do think the excess flow here is really, really nice because again, it allows me to spam Breach Surge for my allies um, and just kind of still remain active and not being bored of just buff, buff, and then, sorry, buff, buff, and then that's it. It's like, buff buff and then help buff buff help get the idea 
continuity self-explanatory just a little bit of duration um so then we've also got the power donation so i do want to go and talk about this one because there might be someone who'll be like why don't you just use growing power and you're not actually wrong so let's go and talk about this i lose me myself i lose 30 percent ability strength but the squad mates will gain 30 percent ability strength i think it's within the affinity range so the reason why i do like that as well is because again my goal is to support Okay, that's all i'm doing but that also means sometimes i'm just there to support i'm just chilling out all right i do a lot of damage killing builds and all of this other stuff sometimes i do just want to kind of take a bit of a back step so growing power um it's on status effect with weapon then the squad increase it remains i have to be a little bit active um and then i can also go and help them on top of it but then it's only for six seconds so in the times where i want to go and chill out you know, <laughs> or if I'm not running like a super heavy like status uh, weapon, then it's situational. All right. Um, I would rather just this because it's flat and I can apply it. It doesn't hurt me too much. If you don't want to go ahead and hurt any 30% return values on reservoir and so forth, don't run it. All right. You can run a few other things if you really want to, but for the most part, it will just be anything to go and help them. Maybe even like Dreamer's Bond, it still wouldn't even be that bad for like energy towards your allies. Actually, at that point, I think you just go energy siphon because um, that can also go and help them. Uh, and that would also get increased returns on this as well. So you give them a bit of energy over time and that keeps ticking. So boom, you could do that. And that's also going to be quite nice. It's, it's entirely up to you. There's, there's quite a few different slots that you can play with here. Just find out what suits you, all right? I do like this because I'm trying to go and play the supportive role. Now, as for the arcanes, um, I won't lie to you. There's not a tremendous amount. I'm going to go and put this as simplistic as I can. Anything in here that basically says allies, those are the ones that you're really kind of aiming towards. The issue is, is that Pulse... 60% chance to restore 500 health to allies within 25 meters. We've already got Reservoir, and that's healing over time anyways. And Molt Reconstruct is, it heals you, you, sorry, it heals yourself and allies with an affinity range for six health. But again, I'm already healing with my thing. So at this point, Arcane Energize is good though, because this can also apply towards allies within 150 meters, given a 60% chance to replenish 150 energy. So that can also be nice, and that would synergize with Nourish. So you could go and chuck that in if you have an Energize. If you don't, Molt Efficiency works pretty well for you, because just whilst you've got shields, which is easy to do, jump, <laughs> and you won't be shot, or just go and put your second out, you can go ahead and get 36% 30, increased ability duration which again works out really well with your reservoirs and then finally down here we got molt figure and what i like to go and do for this one is as soon as i'm about to go and put um as soon as i'm about to go and put those down so you see how that gives me 47 percent there now if i do this what i do is i'll run a matterai focus school i will go ahead and run sling strength down here I'm going to sling into the grounds and then as I sling into the grounds I'm then going to go ahead and use an operator ability and I get an extra 45% strength but I also get an extra 40% strength from sling which means I get 85% increased strength just from doing this action so instead of me putting the the reservoir thing down like that where it gives me 47 I'm now going to go and do this I'm going to go sling 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 second ability come out and now i'm going to put it down and now it's 64 percent. you see how that jumps up significantly now for anybody who doesn't know if you've got multiple wisp on your team the wisp who has the highest amount of strength is the reservoirs that will give you the highest amount so if you could have four lots of wisps, do they stack no it will choose whoever has the highest strength Matterai with the Molt Vigor is also going to help you there. And the reason why I go Molt Vigor as opposed to things like Molt Augmented here is because Molt Augmented is going to take a little while to go ahead and scale. So if you are in scaling missions, go for it. But even at the beginning of missions, I'd rather go and give everybody like maximum return right there and then. That's how I go ahead and do it. All right. So I kind of prefer Molt Vigor, but I just got to remember every time I recast it, remember, go to Operator, Sling, 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 using the Operator ability, off you go. All right. Anyways, that's basically the build. So, um, the Archon Shards over here, just real quick, um, not much to go ahead and talk about. I'm not going to lie to you. When it comes towards this build, there's only like three major things that I personally care about. Um, Crimsons, okay? Ability duration, I think is really, really good for the quality of life that you can get in here. I only have one duration mod on my build, which is Prime Continuity. So, this gives me like almost another Prime Continuity in its own self. 40% ability duration is great for when allies leave like leave the home fly away and they go off and do their things that's great all right so it'll keep the uh, bus and ability uh buffs on them for longer 
Um, from there onwards, another Crimson can be used for ability strength to give yourself even more returns on this. So if you want to buff this like crazy, ability strength, if you want the quality of life, ability duration. So I'm saying that's basically what you're doing. And then the final thing is a bit of casting speeds. It's, you don't really need it, but I'm not going to lie to you. I like it, especially when I'm breach surging like crazy. Um, so if you're not doing a lot of breach surge spamming, you don't really need this. You could just take five crimsons and you'll be all right. But there's not really many other things going pop in there. So it's entirely up to you. But if I did, if there was some others, I would have put it on screen by now. All right. <laughs> Anyways, gameplay. We'll go and put that up on the screen. Uh, there's not a lot of gameplay to go ahead and be shown here because as you could imagine, I'm the support. So as I am the support, my goal is to go ahead and get the reservoirs down, go and get the nourish over towards the allies. And then I'm basically there to kind of kick and chill. Uh, I know that I've given people lots of extra health. I can also go and protect the defense targets. So if you're doing like Archon hunts, and you've got chipper to go and protect or you're doing sorties and you've got that like defense survival guy to go ahead and protect as well um this can also go and protect them you know just those extra layers is not a bad thing i won't lie to you i think if i did a poll right now most people would like a wisp in their group it's very very rare that you would find someone who doesn't really like having a wisp in their group she just gives so much good utility and so much survival towards the team so when you go and add in a helmet option to go ahead and give things like energy multiplier and so forth i mean i mean yeah <laughs> what more do you want me to say she becomes this absolutely dominant support queen of supporting right now um to go ahead and throw into a group and just allow them to go and continue killing and doing their thing you ain't got to fight over kills you ain't got to contest or anything kick back and chill do the easy work right that's, that's the nice way it's going to do about it and then every so often if you can like i said go and cast some breach surges um especially if you're looking to go ahead and get some kills yourself as well um there's just no harm in not having breach surges out there uh, and then use your second and your passive whenever you need to right just hop around okay don't get too bored when you go and play it um because <laughs> if you're just buffing then it might get a little bit stale but anyways let's go bring you guys back right now what it do um so anyways that's going to basically be the build hopefully i didn't spend too long run in or yap in there i wanted to really just make sure to make this video itself like an engaging video because i want you guys to realize that wisp is super super fun to play she's just not flashy right and um i'm hoping it does well i'm hoping the video does well because uh these are the kind of builds that unfortunately youtube don't really a lot of players don't seek these types of builds but again they're really 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 good they're just not flashy but some people want flashy stuff you know so if you're a person who has enjoyed this video and this has helped you or you know it'll help someone else maybe significant other or a clan member or someone else like that consider leaving a like on the video and share share the video with whoever it is could also benefit from it if you are new to the channel as well please go ahead and subscribe but thank you guys so much for watching today's video i'll catch you guys again in the next one take care guys <laughs>